everybody, this is Delane with McDonald's Sewing and Vacuum, and today I'm going to be showing you how to manage fonts and handle text in the Premiere Plus 2 software. So the first thing that I recommend that you do before we do anything else is open a browser. I'm going to open Google Chrome, and I let's go to McDonald'sVacuums.com. You could also, either uh, McDonald's Vacuums or McDonald'sSewing.com works. Um, and then when you get to the page, I suggest that you click on Classes and Events. And when that comes up, oh, it is up, okay. Um, and then we're going to scroll down toward the bottom. Um, and right down here, you'll see on the right side, Premiere Plus Software. And we're going to be doing the managing fonts and handling text today. Um, the handouts for this class are right here on the website. So here's the Windows one and here's the Mac version. And I strongly recommend that you download those, click on it and download it and print it out before uh, you start the class. So pause me right now and do that. <laughs> and then you can start the class up again. Um, when you've got that printed out. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is open the Premiere Plus 2 software. And just so you know, I'm using a Windows machine, so um, I'm going to be using the instructions for and showing you how to do this in Windows. Um, the navigation in Macs are, is going to be different, but um, the actual project steps are basically the same. So hopefully, if you're um, proficient with your Mac, you'll be able to use the instructions and stay with us, um, or stay with me as I do the Windows version. Okay, so now I'm going to double click on Premiere Plus 2, the icon for that. And when that opens, um, we're going to do something that I recommend we do before class every time, and that is um, reset um, all modules. So what we're going to do is come down here to the bottom on Windows, and again I'm always talking about Windows today, so, uh, and click on Premiere Plus 2 Configure, and on Mac you're going to find that little tool, that little tool uh, set um, icon, wherever it is, and we're going to click on Reset All Modules, so, and it's actually going to close my software, and reset everything to the default settings. That way we're all kind of on the same, uh, in the same place. So now I'm going to double click on the Premiere Plus 2 icon again. And this time it will open. And when it does, sometimes it takes a little while. Not usually that long. <laughs> Okay, there we go. When it opens, um, the first thing we're going to do is in this ribbon right here, we're going to change the hoop. So find the link to or the uh, icon to change the hoop. Click on that. And we're going to select a 200 by 200 hoop right there. And we're going to set it to the natural position. So this is the position that it would go onto the machine and then click OK. So now we've got the hoop we're going to work with. <clears throat> Excuse me. Alright, I'm going to page 2 in the Windows handout and the first thing we're going to do is work with finding and working with fonts. So, um, first thing you want to do, there's a, a line of tabs up here, so we're going to select the letter tab and there's a drop down arrow right next to the font manager here. If you click on that, it's going to show you all of the fonts that are currently installed on the machine. Um, so there are applique fonts, fonts for children, display, and so on. You can kind of scroll through all of those. If you've had the software for a while, you probably already are familiar with what's in here, but if it's new to you, um, these are all the fonts that have come with it, plus a few that I've added. Okay, so I'm going to go back to letter, and this time, 
So you can scroll through and find the font that you want this way. But let's say you have a favorite font that you want to use. You can go in, click on the font manager here, and there is actually a search box here on the screen. And if you type, uh, if you click in that search box, we're going to type ribbon and hit the enter key and it brings up that ribbon font. So let's say that's one that I've enjoyed using. I can get to it quickly this way. Um, I'm going to go to uh, down here to the um, search box again. This time I'm going to click on clear and in the search box I'm going to type the word applique. Oops. I can get my fingers in the right place uh, and hit the enter key and so now I'm seeing all of the fonts that have applique in them okay so it's kind of a quick way to get to what you want um, there are another one uh, the next one so we're on step number five on page two I just cleared the text again and we're going to type capital UC and hit enter UC stands for uppercase, and if you notice in the naming convention, all of these different um, fonts have UC in them. And what that means is uh, they, the letters are only available as uppercase letters. There aren't going to be any lowercase letters available in this particular font. Okay, I'm going to clear this one. And we're going to do uh, one more. We're going to type Christmas. Sorry for the almost yawn there. I don't know why I'm doing that. And this is one of the new fonts with Premiere Plus 2. Uh, it's actually a Christmas font, and it does have uppercase and lowercase, and that can be a, a fun one to play with. And you may have noticed from my um, desktop that it's Christmas. It's December, <laughs> December 2020 while I'm doing this. So um, it's uh, Christmas is kind of a... I might play around with that font a little bit this Christmas. Okay. Now the next, I'm going to go ahead and clear the search box. And the next thing I want to show you is you can also search by size. So I'm on page three of the handout um, and step eight, number eight. And what it's telling us to do is click on this size box here. I'm going to change the size. It says to change the size to 60 millimeters. So I'm going to type 60. Whoops. I was too slow. I'm going to type 60 in there. And it's showing me, and then I've got a plus or minus 5 millimeters indicated here. So, um, you know, you can change that if you want only those that are 60, that have 60 millimeter fonts in them, then you can change that to zero and it will only give you those. The plus or minus, you might decide that that's 70 is close enough, for example. Um, so, um, anyway, it shows you all of the, those fonts that are available in that size. Um, the time that I use this the most is when I'm looking for a really small font that I want to use, maybe for a recipe towel or, a, um, oh, I don't know, maybe sometimes I use it on shirts for people at the store, employees at the store. Uh, sometimes you're just going to want a smaller font, and this is a quick way to get to those. Okay, so I'm going to uncheck size now on, on step 9, page still on page 3 of the handout. And in the search box, we're going to type Mandela and hit enter, and it's going to bring up this font. Uh, it's available in two size ranges, 15 to 30 or 30 to 60 millimeters. We're going to choose the 15 to 30 millimeter font, and then we're going to click on close. And now that we've got it, it's it's selected here in the upper left-hand corner, and we're going to change the size in the size box to 25 millimeters. So I'm going to change that to a 2, and we're going to leave the shape as horizontal, and then we're going to type the word, I didn't do this yet, we're going to type that word, mandala or mandala, I'm not quite sure what the correct pronunciation is, so if I mispronounce it, I apologize. And then we're going to click on apply. There we go. 
if I'd thought about it, I would have looked that word up and made sure I knew how to pronounce it, but uh, I think I've heard it both ways. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is hover over that word and do a right click with your mouse. On Mac, it's going to be different, but however you get this menu to come up, there's an extra menu that will, a pop up menu that will come up here. And there are several things you can do. One of the things you can do is fix a stitches. So if you're ready to turn this into stitches at this point, you can click on that um, and it will take out all the editing properties for you. I think we'll uh, avoid that right now. <laughs> Under properties, it will allow you to, uh, it'll bring up another menu here or another screen and you can make changes to the letters, the size, um, the connections, you can change the shape or the alignment and so on. But I'm going to click cancel here and then I'm going to go back, hover back over that word and right click again. The next options available is handles and we're going to go in, use the handles uh, quite a bit in a few minutes. Um, the next thing you can do is a satin column. So let's say you wanted to change the satin column to a pattern. I'm just going to type any number in here to get the patterns to come up. And then uh, this, the instructions for this are not in the handout, but I just wanted to show you. You can make changes to the satin so it has a pattern if you want, or uh, let's say you're trying to do a font that's really wide or a satin that's really wide. You can change it so that you have um, a pattern in there so that you don't you can still get a really large letter without having that really wide satin stitch. And there are other things you can change in here, but that's the main thing I've used that for. Okay, so hover back over the, the word and you can also change the type of running stitch. You can, we've got an undo button, cut, copy, duplicate, and um, sending it off to your machine and that kind of thing. So uh, all of those options are available here. Okay, so I'm going to turn the page to page four and we're going to take a closer look at the handles menu. Um, in the handles menu, um, you can adjust the line shape. There's all kinds of things. I'm not going to read this for you. Uh, you can read all about it on, on in the handout, but we're going to go straight to playing with it. So um, I've got my handle selected and it brings up, I have to slide over on the windows uh, with my mouse to get to this submenu here. And the first thing we're going to choose, I'm on the handout on page five, um, step three, we're going to choose diamond. And look what that did. <laughs> Just by choosing diamond, it created a diamond shape for me. I can move the hand, center handle up but I can't, you see, I can't move it side to side. I can only move it up or down. Same thing with the bottom one. I'll up or down are my only choices on those um, internal um, handles. Okay, so I'm going to also now go undo, click on undo, and I'm going to click on undo. You can either do it with this menu that I showed you here, but that's two clicks to me. Uh, up here in your very top, bar, um, there's an undo button that you can just keep clicking until you get back to that rectangle. So that's where we want to be. All right, now I'm going to hover over the word, do a right click again, and go back to the handles menu. This time we're going to choose the double diamond. And now instead of um, one handle, we've got two that we can adjust uh, on, in the diamond. And you can make it kind of funky if you want to, or make them the same. Um, again, we can move them up or down, but we can't move them to side to side. Um, now we can move the side handles left to right and so on. Um, and it's got, it's doing it just the one side. If you want both hand sides to move the same, press your shift key and then move one of those side handles and it's moving both sides at the same time. So that's a nice little tip too. Okay, um, you can even turn it upside down, she says, by moving the center handles this way. Ooh, look at that twist I got in it. And up 
upside down that way and I can do that. There's all kinds of weird stuff that you can do, but we that when you can't even tell what the word is anymore. All right, so I'm going to do some more undoing until I get back to my rectangle. And I did quite a bit. So, but you've got unlimited undos in the software, which is really nice. There we go. We're back to our rectangle. Okay. Uh, I guess the next thing we're going to do is delete this word. So, I have a tendency to just highlight it and use the delete button, delete key on my uh, computer, but you can also use that menu, uh, right click and click on delete and that removes it as well. Okay, in, now we're gonna go back to the font manager up here so we can search for another font and in the search box, we're gonna type bamboo. I think I know how to pronounce that one. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing actually, but okay, there we go. So we've got bamboo selected. We're going to type the word bamboo in the letters box. Um, we're going to change the font size again to 25 millimeters. Leave it with the rectangle and click on apply. So we're going to play with the handles menus uh, some more. So I'm going to right click on top of the word and go to this handles um, submenu here. And we are going to make sure, leave the match top and bottom lines selected. So by default, it's selected there. Why am I pointing at it? Here, I'll use my mouse, this right here. If you look, uh, if you can see this part right here is yellow, even when I move away, that means it's selected. Then we are going to change the constraint size, the constraint to pennant. And I'm going to turn the page to pay in the handout to page six. And I'm going to grab one of these side handles. Oops. And look, by grabbing one, I can create a, a pennant effect, which would be really fun for your local ball team or your kids um, ball team if you wanted to make some cute little um, t-shirts or something for them. Um, we're going to now change this. We're going to go back and highlight, do a right click, go back to handles, and she's suggesting that we try a different constraint. So this time we're going to go with constraint free. And you can move your handles in all different directions now. She's got kind of a perspective going on. I'm not quite sure I can get that effect, but yeah, you see how you can kind of change the perspective in a different direction. Um, so that's without any constraints. So you can kind of move stuff anywhere you want to. Okay, I'm going to do an undo until we get back to the um, rectangle, original rectangle here. There we go. And I'm going to go back to the handles menu and this time I'm going to select the curve. And this is really cool. We have two new handles here. Now, um, we're going to right click and go back to that handles menu again. And this time they want to select constraint size. So we'll go back to that, go back to the handles menu, and I've got constraint size selected. I'm going to deselect, though, this match top and bottom lines. So right here, I'm going to click on that, and that'll deselect it, and I'll show you what I mean here in a minute. So now, do you see there's no yellow box right there that has that selected? And this time, we can change the bottom line type to a double diamond. And looky there, isn't that cool? Um, so I've got a straight line here. I can do a curve on the top and then have a different line, have the diamond selected here for the bottom. So on the bottom, again, I can't move them right or left, just up or down. And on the top, I can make whatever kind of crazy curve I want to make. Okay. Now we're going to uh, click back on that handles menu again. And this time we're going to click on force even distribution. 
Um, and this time I can actually move the bottom diamond handles left or right if I want to, which I couldn't do before. So there we go. There are a lot of options there. And um, I, if you're like me, you could probably spend hours playing with this. So, um, but instead of doing that right now, <laughs> we're not going to play for hours. Hopefully you will come in and play for hours later. We're going to delete bamboo off the screen. Okay, so that's uh, the handles and kind of playing around with the shapes. Of course, I didn't show you, and this is in the workbook or in the handout, but there are also all these different shapes that you can use. Let me just show you one. Um, and actually, I'll show you another one. Apply. And so there's all these other different shapes in there that are already set and kind of fun to play with. Um, so if you can also try all these different uh, preset shapes that are available. And you can reverse them and all kinds of things. So there's tons of stuff to do in the software here with fonts. OK. Now we're going to move on to the next part, which is part four, using the font tools in Font Manager. For the Windows folks, I'm on page six. and um, we're going to click on the font manager right here to launch the font manager. And it came up when I did that. Over here, there are some tools. There's the import font from Embroideries tool and the quick font tool. We're going to focus for this class on the import font from Embroideries tool. And what this will do is it'll let you take any font that you've purchased from someone somewhere else and Add it to the software so you can actually use the keys, the letter keys, to type the font. So um, hopefully this will make a little more sense. If you've ever purchased a font before, you know that you have to place each letter individually uh, uh, or select each letter individually uh, and then line them up if you don't do this. But if we import, uh, let's just go ahead and uh, add that. Sorry. We're going to click on this little icon right here, import a font from Embroideries, and we're going to type the name of scroll alphabet in the box that comes up. That's what we're naming this font. Okay, and then it's going to bring up a window where you can select your font. So uh, if you save your fonts in a particular folder on your um, computer. You can navigate there, but for now we're going to go to uh, Documents and Premiere Plus 2 and Samples. Whoops, I went to System Backup, which I didn't mean to do. Samples. <laughs> and uh, Premiere Plus 2 Embroidery, EMB, this folder right here. And then we're going to select the Stitch 2 folder and Alphabet. That's a long way, so uh, pause me if you need to so you can catch up with me. And I'm going to click on Open. Oh, I'm not. I'm going to type Scroll Alphabet, I believe. Or maybe, I, oh, no, I need to select a letter. So I'm going to select the letter A. Sorry, got a little lost there for a minute. See, it happens to all of us. And then you get this screen up. Okay? All right, so um, we're going to leave the default height, uh, the name. I would recommend always going with extended or super extended. Super extended is going to get you all of your... Um, uh, punctuation and extra characters and things so that's a good thing and can you see now we've got the letter A is highlighted here and we've got the letter A here okay so that's ready to go now the next thing we're going to do is add the rest of the alphabet so I'm going to click on the letter B next and when I do, it takes me back to the folder where I was working before. And I'm going to click on the scroll letter B and open that. I'm going to click on C. 
It's going to take me back to that window. Click on scroll letter C. Um, I'm going to go and do D. I'm not going to do the full alphabet. Um, well, actually, we probably should do it together um, until we get all of them defined. So let's just take a few minutes and get all of those letters defined. The thing is, you can't go back once you've saved it and add to them. Um, you can delete what you've done and start over <laughs> or, you know, start a new folder with um, the remaining alphabet. But it's better just to go through and do the whole thing if you can. So I'm clicking on that, on the G, and then the H. The I. And I believe this is an all caps alphabet, so we don't have to do 26 letters twice, <laughs> but at least ready to do, I think I'm on J. Guess I should pay attention. There's a J. Yep, good. Uh, K. I'm not going to, I'm going to stop saying what I'm doing because. I don't want to mess you up if you're doing this with me. And in a different place, go to my next letter. And my next letter. And then I'll just keep going until I've got all of them. That's a pretty O. Oh, I really like this font. I think it's pretty. Okay, there's that one. To my next letter. And when I get to the end, I'm going to tell you to go ahead and pause me until you get, if you you're behind me, I'm going to suggest that you pause and pause me until you get all your letters put in. I'm still working though. Well, maybe I should have some music in the background or something. <laughs> Usually I end up, if I'm in a class, I end up talking all the way through it. And um, I thought maybe I'd let you have a little quiet today. Okay, got to Z. Now the last thing we have is a single dot for punctuation. So I'm going to go to... The arrows to the next page and find the period and then I'm going to go to this scroll dot up here and add that and that's my punctuation and that's it. Now if you need to you can make changes uh, before you save it. Uh, if you incorrectly added the letter you can click on delete. So let's say I got the letter A wrong. I can hmm. well it says I can delete it. To add the letter back, click okay, the letter will disappear. Hmm. Well, I'm not oh there we go. The A seems to be stuck, but here I could delete my F. If I got it wrong, I can delete it. 
I'm going to say no because I did get it right, but you can delete it and add the correct one. Okay, so when you've got it all ready to go, you're going to com to complete your alphabet, you're going to click on the close button and you'll get a com confirmation Uh, yeah, okay, I should have gotten a confirmation. I didn't see that. I'm going to click close here. And let me see if my font showed it. Yeah, there's my scroll alphabet. So um, when I clicked on uh, the drop down box over here, it showed up under my fonts. There it is. And whoops. And let's see what my name looks like. Well, actually, it's not a very good font for because it's all caps. Um, Let's see what DM looks like, my initials. And there we go. Oh, don't really like that. Um, there, that's a much better shape, I think, for this one, although the, that was okay. And then, of course, you can manipulate the letters. We'll, we can talk about that in another time, get them closer together and so on. But we're not going to be doing that today. So now, as you can see, you can work with this font like you would any other. Um, so if we did Patrick Deline and Patrick and Deline's uh, monogram, you can work with it. You type your letters in the box. You can change all the different things that we can change here, play with all of those handles and so on, and just like you would a font that's in the software. It's a lot easier to deal with than trying to deal with those individual letter files for each font. Okay, so there are quite a few notes there, but uh, I'll let you read through those. That's the end of the class, basically. So um, what we would do if I wanted to save this file, I'm going to delete the, let's say I wanted to save this, maybe make it a little bit bigger. Um, let's see, I think I'll go this way. Ooh, that's too big around with it a little bit kind of like that one so if I wanted to save this I can go to file I recommend you save it as uh, anything any file that you're going to stitch out as the VP4 format um, I'm just going to do PMD because I will know what that means and click on save the VP format is going to retain all those handles and things here so you can change your font uh, a little bit or your um, monogram or whatever your file. Um, if you go ahead and export it, it's going to take out all of those um, edit editing ability capabilities there. When you are ready to stitch it out though, what you need to do is export it. And this is going to allow you to select the VP3 format or if you're sharing it with somebody that has a different machine or needs a different format. You can save it in a different format there. And then I'm going to just go ahead and export it. Click on OK. And the system automatically adds the word exported to it so that you know which one, which file, uh, besides the extension, you have the word exported in there. And you can go stitch it out. The other cool thing is I could send it to my Sonet if I wanted to. I'm not going to do that right now. But you could save it to the cloud or send it directly to your machine if you have a MySonet enabled machine. Well, I hope this was fun and that you learned some things about fonts today. If you do have any questions, feel free to contact me. Um, my email address is mcdonaldssewing at att.net or um, you can contact the store to figure out how to get a hold of me otherwise. Thanks very much and happy sewing!